I will have to start this by apologize for the fact that you probably won't be able to hear me correctly because one, I have no voice, two, I have my nose completely stuffed and so I'm talking through my nose without voice, which is apparently harder than you'd ever believe and I have to take a lot of stops to actually breathe in and out. So welcome to allergy season because it's on fire. <laughs> Hello beautiful bookworms, my name is Katarina and welcome to my channel and today I am going to be doing another installment of something that I have not done a lot but I wish I could do more of which is comparing the original material of books, graphic novels or mangas to movies or TV shows or whatever adaptation we will be talking about. So yeah. So for this particular video I am going to be comparing the comics called Lock and Key that are by Joe Hill and Gabrielle Rodriguez and the new Netflix adaptation of Lock and Key. I have no idea who directs that. I should have researched for video purposes, but guess what? I did not. So I have read the entirety of the Lock and Key comic series twice and this reread happened in preparation for actually watching the Netflix show, which came out, I do believe, 7th of February? Yeah, 7th. So 8th and 9th of February, I actually watched all of the series. It has 10 episodes and it's like 49 minutes per episode, sort of. Um, some are bigger, some are smaller. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this because I, for one, absolutely love the original material of Lock and Key. And so, as you will discover throughout this review, I do love the original material more than the TV show. However, I don't really hate the TV show. I just think it's a little bit mediocre. So, if you did not like the TV show, I just want to tell you that you have an entirety of comics about Lock and Key that you can read and they are actually in trade version now so you can just pick up six graphic novels, six trades and read them instead of just being reading the comics together. And if you really, really loved the TV show, I have news for you. The book is better than the movie so you can pick it up and love it even more. And I want you to know that I pondered very well what I was going to say in this video because I, when I finished watching Lock and Key, I had no idea what I wanted to portray to you guys. So I had no idea if I wanted to say, like, if I blunt out did not enjoy it or if I did enjoy it and how I would portray that to you guys. So I decided to be as honest as possible and throughout this review, I will try my best not to spoil anything. But if there's something that I feel like it's sort of spoilery, I will warn you before I talk about that. If not, I will leave timestamps down below just so you know where I mention things that could possibly be spoilery, but I wouldn't worry if I were you because I will give my best not to do so. So without further ado, let's just get into my sort of comparison review about the thingy and I hope you enjoy this video. So first of all, I want to present to you the comics of Lock and Key and in this situation I'm going to show you the trade volumes, which are the big volumes that comprise the issues of the comics that came first. I don't have the comics, my boyfriend doesn't have the comics, these are actually my boyfriend's trades. And uh, I read it through the trades and I really enjoy the experience because each of the trades has a specific subtitle, which I will show you in a moment, and it has to do with specific happenings that are going on, although the story is cohesive and it's all back and forth. So from the first one until the sixth, it is a cohesive together with beginning, middle and ending story. So for that reason, you can pick up and read all of them in a row and it will be okay. There is no, no such thing as an in-between sort of situation. So you just have to read everything in order to know the beginning, the ending. So I will present to you now. So we'll start with the first volume, which is Lock and Key, Welcome to Lovecraft. As I said, this series is by Joe Hill and Gabrielle Rodriguez. And Joe Hill is the writer for the series and Gabrielle Rodriguez is the artist for the series. I will show you some of the art of this first book which 
is the one that has less spoilers and for that reason I will just try and find a part where there's no spoilers so just two people on a boat and more things without spoilers yeah here you go just so you can check out the art it's very raw it's very crude very realistic and I really really enjoy it there are actual people that look like the people in here and for that I'm very grateful because it helped me actually feel into the story. So yeah, this is the first volume, Welcome to Lovecraft. The second volume, Head Games, looks like this. The third volume, Crown of Shadows, which I mean, this whole aesthetic is so pleasing. It's like, is it as dark as my soul and I love it. Then we have volume four, which is Keys to the Kingdom, and it looks like this, and it's possibly my favorite cover of the entirety of the trades, because, wow. Number five, Clockworks, beautiful as well. And number six, Alpha and Omega, which looks like this, which doesn't tell you a lot if you haven't read the books. So for the sake of actually being brief and telling you a little bit of the base story, the base story for the... Ooh, sorry, for the graphic novels, comics, whatever, series is the same for the TV show adaptation out on Netflix. And it is, I will show this one, it is the story of this family, three children, two of which are teenagers and one of which is really a child, very, very small child, and their mother moved to this mansion which is called Key House. It's a mansion really, it really looks like this in the TV show and in the series, in this series, so I will just show it. And they moved there because their dad was killed by this guy that he used to help. Uh, and so in order for them to be safe, they move here with their uncle, their uncle lives here, and they move with their mother, and they move there. So it's a story all about them discovering that in this house there are certain keys, like this one, for instance, and these keys are sort of magical. If put through the right door at the right moment and with the right people, they... stuff happens. Like, there's a key that turns you into a ghost, there's a key that lets you pick into people's heads, and there are a lot of other keys that I am not going to disclose to you because the fun of the books is actually searching and trying to understand which key serves which purpose. There's a lot of keys and of course they're the main event of something called lock and key. Lock is actually a play with the word lock of a lock and lock which is the family name of this uh, family and key the keys of course if, if you couldn't understand that. Um, but yeah this uh, I want to read you um, a sort of prologue, this paragraph that someone wrote, someone called Robert Crace wrote about Lock and Key, and it says, Lock and Key works so well, I think, because it resonates with basic fears that all of us share, our loss of innocence, that we might unwittingly hurt someone we love, that revealing ourselves in a moment of weakness might inevitably lead to our undoing, or worse. This is the stuff of great stories, and when the author tosses in thrills, chills, and a promise of worse things waiting, the reader is in for a hell of a ride. And it is true. This is basically a drama mixed with horror, mixed with fantasy. And I absolutely love it. Of course, there's trigger warnings for loss of a loved one and other things like alcoholism, abuse, not in the way that you think, but it is there. Uh, fear, there, there's a lot of blood and some situations that are not very easy. But this is sort of a work that is very and extremely realistic, even with the fantasy things. This is something that is drawn and thought of as it could happen to you, because it's a family drama in a way, and you grow up with the characters. And I love this. I cried reading this, I laughed reading this, I felt for the characters reading this, including secondary characters, which sometimes don't have as much of a spotlight as they should, because they really help the plot moving along, and I really love all of the characters in this story, and I really love all of the plot paces and everything. There are no plot holes, there's, it's just, it's amazing, it's an amazing work of art, and this is a story about growing up, it's a story about letting go of your fears. It's a story about 
can you grow up to be the person that you truly want to be or will you go through wrong paths how is it going to go are you going to make mistakes can you live with that mistakes and it's just it's an amazing story that's that's basically what the comics are about now the premise for the tv show is exactly the same however what they're doing with the tv show is they picked up the base sort of plot there's this family the dad died there's this house with keys that do stuff and there's this enemy that wants the keys and that's the same in the books and in the series however in the series they decided that the focus of the series was not going to be the growing up part of the process the family drama that is inherent to situations that occur with your loved ones but instead what they did was focus on sort of a high school ragtag group of teenagers and a kid just solving situations and there's this enemy and we're going to have to fight them and yeah so it's sort of like Stranger Things but instead of being an 80s sci-fi it's sort of a modern sort of fantasy-ish kind of thing where you have this enemy and you have to go up against him and you have your friends and the, all of the high school drama situation that comes along with it lovers and uh, friend quarrels and um, yeah you know the drill and that's what made me a little bit less interested in the series per se than in the comic books because the series is sort of a repetition of a lot of media that I've seen and consumed throughout the years whereas lock and key comics are different because although all of those parts are there there's drama between the family, there's drama between the brothers, there's drama with people that they love and then don't love, there's drama with friends, there's there's a lot of friend drama, there's a lot of high school situations, but it's not as preponent and as forced as in our normal high school drama TV shows, which we had enough of, in my opinion, and this had the potential to do something different, and it didn't. It had some plot holes, it had some people that... Honestly, they switched characters for no reason when they had the base characters that they needed. And I was just asking, like, why is this person here? Why is this important to the plot? And then they completely changed the plot of the books, which, I mean, I don't really care that much. And it was fun to actually see where they were going with it. There were some plot twists and they were good. Not that I didn't understood where they were going before they did. But it was nice, it was enjoyable, it was something that you could watch, like, okay, I had a really bad day of having to work a lot and I'm tired, I'm just going to put this on and it's going to blow my mind a little and it's okay. But it's not the same as being immersed in a cohesive story that brings out so many emotions out of you. And right now what I want is to feel that, is to know that my time and my interest is invested in something that if I'm reading it, it's because it's good. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I also read guilty pleasure reads like Outlander, Discovery of Witches. A lot of things that I know are not good and are not going to make me feel amazed by how life is and how plots are amazing. But when you have such an amazing base material, what stops you from doing more than a mediocre show? Because that's what I felt. It was enjoyable. If it was amazing, no. I, I don't want to tell you with this, like, don't watch the show. That's not where I'm going to go. Because for once, I loved seeing the keys transformed into actual metal keys. I never knew that a piece of metal can make me so interested in watching a TV show, but they're just so beautiful and they do such amazing things. And if you like fantasy, it is an amazing show for you to watch. And if you like that Stranger Things, high school friends and found family ragtag group thing, you will love to watch it. And I did enjoy watching it. I watched the 10 episodes in one weekend and I did not watch anything else almost. So it's something that pulls you. But is it as great as it could have been? Sadly, no. And that is my opinion. You can have a totally different opinion and that is also fine. I do not own the opinions of people and they do not own my opinions. So it's okay, but I'm just saying... This is how I feel about this situation. So, 
as I said in the beginning, if you love the TV show, you have something that, in my opinion, is even better and you can pick it up and love it. If you don't love the TV show, then please, by all means, pick up the comics because Lock and Key is amazing. The, the real original Lock and Key is amazing. So something else that I really wanted to say is that both in the TV show and in the books, there is um, people of color introduced, so that's a bonus point. I do believe, and but this is um, an opinion of my own that I, I really, I don't know if it's true or not, because of, of course I haven't talked with Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez about this, but um, there is this situation in which um, we can have representation for non-binary people, and... For that reason alone, I mean, both uh, in the TV show and in the books, although I do feel that it's more proponent in the books, um, at least the way I see it, but okay. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot also in the book, the comic books, there's a lot of talk about racism and how it affects people, which I really enjoyed as well because it's not treated as some stuff. You know, it actually has to do with a plot and it is kind of complicated. There's, um, I don't know, there's just, there's a lot of trigger warnings as well. So if you have any doubts about that, maybe tell me so in the comments down below, which is uh, important <laughs> uh, for people to know because sometimes it can be too hard. Uh, there are some scenes that were very, very hard. Uh, what else? What else? Basically, what I, what I really mean by this is that in the comic books you have character development and you have a progression of characters and character development for me is one of the key essential plot points of stuff in a tv show you don't have a lot of character development you sometimes have character regression even which i mean you can say what you will about that but it's not really great unless it does have a point and in this case it doesn't um but in the books, the actual books, it's one of the best examples of done right character development. And for that alone, even when the plot is amazingly great and you will love it, but for that alone, I will encourage you to actually read them and look at them and feel that character development in you. The characters stick with you for a long, long time, I feel like. And the second time that I read it, I even loved it more than the first one because there were things that I wasn't paying my due attention to and now I did and it's just, it made me so emotional and I love it. And I I have something that I have to say, actually. I forgot to say, there is also, um, there is also um, a gay representation in here, which is pretty cool. There's a, a gay couple and I really, really like them. And they are not, they are secondary characters, but it's talked about and is explored. And it's also explored uh, because of homophobia, which is really cruel. But because we are in a sort of a small city kind of thing, everyone knows everyone. And it's really rough, but I like the way they address it without fear. And yeah, I, I really enjoy it as well. But the thing that I want to show you, there's just one real reason why I'm very pissed off at the TV show. It's the only reason, and it's a stupid reason. But okay, I will show you. Are you seeing this dude? This dude is the best character. Okay, maybe not the best, but one of the best characters. Okay, the best, okay, of the, of the books for me. He's like this punk sort of English, really British sort of dude. And I absolutely love him. And uh, they changed him to be sort of this... I'm not going to say this sort of... It's not really a nerd strange person because this one is very nerd as well. And I love that. But he's just so very strange. He's like this um, very... I don't know, this very British sort of uh, snobby, I am a very hipster guy that only talks about movies, if you know what I mean. And I was like, where is my punk dude, my punk nerd, my, where is he? I was very sad, but then it grew on me, so yeah, but read the books because you have Scott Kavanaugh in the books and 
He's better in the books than in the TV show. Prove me fucking wrong. So yeah, that's all that I had to say. And maybe I made a mess. And maybe I didn't explain to you properly what this was supposed to be. But you know what? If I didn't, pick up the comic books or go watch the show and enjoy. Because the show is nice, but the comic books are way, way better. So if you want my recommendation, I would say... Pick up the comic books, and then, if you want, give the show a watch, because why not? It's interesting. So, yeah, that's going to be all for today. Just tell me in the comments down below if you know Lock and Key, if you've read it, or if you've watched it, and what's your opinion, because I am very open to actually discuss if you believe that the series is better than the books. Just tell me why down below. I'm totally fine with that. So, no fights here, but yeah. That's going to be all for today and thank you for sticking with me with my nasal and screechy voice and yeah that's going to be all for today so happy readings to you all and happy valentine's day to you all so yeah bye